Good, very early morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. Oh, well, I what? just looked. It really is still. It's six forty-five in the morning. Yeah, that's I why I say good, very early morning. I haven't really registered what time it was. I just looked. Oh, I'm up. Steve's up. Let's, let's do it. Let's jump right in. Holy moly. Yeah, it's 645 in the morning. That's why I said very early morning. Very we early. are in Korea, in Seoul. I love the name of that. Don't you just I'm feel alive? Seoul, and you're... then last night we're walking around in Gangnam. I'm the Gangnam style. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. <laughs> anyway, welcome to <laughs> the, the Fun Road. Oh, you have to. Cough up oh, a little yeah. just to make sure you got a good voice. <laughs> Welcome to the fun road. This is a podcast about ticks and wait, not ticks and trips. I love it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We do ticks and trips from now. No, we do trips. No. Tips and tri <laughs> <laughs> tips and tricks about daily life, how you can gain confidence, and life is all about a fun road. Yeah. You know, it's Life is completely in your hands, but it takes confidence to start making those choices. Totally. And so this podcast is really just small little changes that you can do every single day yeah. to make your life more suited for you. And mm -hmm. the second you start feeling like you're living your best life, mm -hmm. all those other little details just start to fade away. It's amazing. Totally. And we might get somebody banging on the door because it is so early. So we're recording this podcast and we don't know, we think our neighbor is still asleep and the hotel is completely fully booked because <laughs> I know because I tried to change my room because they put me in that, you know, that Harry Potter movie where he sleeps under the stairs. Yeah, they have something like that here in this hotel, but they still made it into a room just in case they need it for, I don't know who, that's where I belong. That's where I went. So Steve got here uh, half a day or a day before me and he says, oh, get ready. Rooms are so small. Tiny. So small. And I thought, okay, now we've traveled so many different places in the world and you find different size rooms all the time. You know, it's very rare that you walk in and it's just this huge room. It's mm. usually pretty small, especially in like Europe and they're revamping yeah, 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 yeah. these older buildings. So anyway, I walk in and I'm like, hmm. Not it's so okay. bad. It's not too bad. It's not so bad. I walk into your room, I go like, what? in the hell hell i mean you were just like come on come on come on I'm, and i'm the tallest person in seoul <laughs> in the whole city in the whole city and he got the room that if he were to lay down on the floor and stretch your arms out you would touch oh, yeah, yeah. wall to wall and if i spread my legs and my arms i can Do lie the in four, the four corners the four corners so he's describing his bath and he's saying yeah the when you put the handle up to wash your hands in the bathroom, from there, there's a little hose to a <laughs> handle that you wash your body with for the shower. There is no shower. You just have to just crawl yeah, underneath stand, the counter yeah. and Stand shower. next to your toilet and just rinse. And I'm like, this is impossible. The way he's describing it just seems so oh, no. wrong. It's totally possible in my totally room. Totally possible. I mean, he turned on the water and it sprayed the entire bathroom. Yeah, crazy. So we're going to post a video of that bathroom on oh, our no. instagram yeah to show oh, God, i mean the tallest the person in seoul in the smallest shower in the world totally. so we both woke up super early because of jet lag mm -hmm. and now we're just ready to hit the road running and today we're going to be talking about something we know well and that is traveling travel. we will give you a couple of tips i mean i've been traveling since nine don't you worry about that. I've been traveling for a long... 19... <laughs> I'm, <not> like, <laughs> I'm not old, I'm established. That's right. <laughs> You're like a fine wine. Yeah, so we know how to travel smart, how to book smart. So we're going to dedicate two episodes about tricks. No, ticks. No, oh. tricks and tips. How to book flights. What do you look for? Stuff like that. So, yeah. That's number one. Yeah, and you've taught me so much about efficiency in traveling because traveling is a very overwhelming 
adventure. Mm -hmm. And most of the time people, it's such a stress about, yeah, yeah. they stress about all these things that really you can have these little shortcuts that make it easier. And let me tell you though, there is a difference of traveling with you versus when I travel with other people. Really? Oh my gosh. I'm just so used to our pace. It's like, zoom, 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 zoom. You know, like we're finding, it's like we're a a speed racer car driving through traffic. And it's like, we have all the shortcuts. We're not waiting for nobody. (laughs) Get into the slow lane. Oh, I, I look over all the people. I know exactly what lane we have to go into. I know exactly how to speed up what we have to do, you know, stuff like that. But let's start with the beginning, you know, booking flights. A very good tip that I want to give you guys is when you book a flight and you do seat assignment. So a lot of companies make you pay to have extra seats. When, when you hear sounds like that, it's just a cat going for some candy. Yeah, and... you guys. So I'm I'm really trying to be healthier for summer. So I just have lots of different varieties of gum. That's the way oh. I'm doing my candy <laughs> selection now. So you I've don't got... have to swallow it. I've got watermelon and I just chew it, chew it, chew it. And I've got bubble gum. I've got cinnamon. But something that we're going to do to start this episode off right. Wait, wait, wait. Three. You go first. Uh, oh, 6.45 in the mean, morning. Nothing better. I'm next. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Give us a second here. Sorry. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so when you do seat assignments online, what I always do, and did you just kill that whole can? Gone. <gasps> Gone. So thirsty. Wait, can you calculate when she <laughs> opened that can until now? That's how fast she drank a whole can. Yeah, how is that possible? My eyes are watering and oh, burn from oh. the top to the bottom. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sure there's a big burp coming up. Oh, let's wait for it. No, no. Okay. Back to what we were talking mm-hmm. about. If you book a flight. So a lot of people travel with two and they like some extra space. So what I always do is when I book my flight, first of all, I always go on a website that search is like a search engine for flights. I use Hopper on my phone and I go to budgetair.be or .com. I'm making publicity for these websites, but ooh, now I'm not making publicity for them. Whatever is the cheapest <laughs> Whatever is the cheapest, I never book it through them. I always go go to the official website of that airline. And I always make sure that I travel within the same airline group. There are three big groups it's called, called Sky Team, One World, and Star Lines. I travel a lot with Star Lines, you a lot with Sky Team. Star Lines is Lufthansa, SIS, Turkish Airlines, United Airlines. So I always book with them. And I save miles just in case and once in a while I want to upgrade. And you get a certain status. You get a gold status. And with that gold status, you get advantages like check-in, business class, stuff like that. So it is good. If you travel a lot, start saving those points. Sign up a card, a frequent flyer card with the company you travel the most. And then look with what other companies they work together with in a group. And most of the time, always book your flights with that same group. Yep. And I book with Sky Team because Delta's hub is in Salt Lake City. Yeah. So every once in a while, it's not convenient to fly on Delta, but we are slaves to our companies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, well, if I fly with Delta and maybe there's not a direct flight, but then I get, usually I always get upgraded. I always can board first. Mm. That was something that I used to not understand about no, people who fly. No. Like, why are you so eager yeah. to get on that plane? And now it's like, step aside, people. <laughs> Let me flash my diamond card. I'm getting on this plane. Because the second you're sitting down, you know yeah. that your luggage is going to make it in the overhead bins. Totally. We travel so much with hand luggage. Yeah. Because the fastest way to yeah. kill your vacation is your luggage not showing yeah, up. Yeah, and no, no more waiting in that line. And mm. you, you just go in the plane, you sit down, and you just start reading, listening to music, whatever you want to do. I used to wait to the very, very last. Yeah, me too. And it changes. It yep. shifts. It shifts. Once you travel a lot, you want to get on there and just get seated. Another perk of flying with the same company is if you can get their club or their lounge, Oh, totally. it makes those just that two hour yeah. layover. Yeah. It's you, like this serenity thing. You walk into the lounge. Yeah. And, yeah. Ah, 
out, there's treats and snacks and yeah, food. And yeah. you know, with, with Emirates, when you fly from Dubai and you, you fly in business class, you board from the lounge. So the lounge is as big as the oh whole airport. Oh my gosh. You board from the lounge. So there's no line, never. You go straight into the upper deck. So, and from there you go straight back in. So it's like, wait a minute. Did yeah. I even, was I even in an airport? That's amazing. Because part of the stress of traveling is all of that hustle and bustle and lines. And mm. you don't realize the stress that that puts on your body and oh. how it, Totally. how it weighs down the fun of traveling totally, until totally. you travel a lot and you start eliminating those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So I fly with Delta and the greatest thing just happened. Like I don't always get the great upgrades like Steve does. Steve is tall, dark and handsome and very, very charming. And they're just like, <laughs> sir, we are blessed to have you in <laughs> our company. Please. I don't think so. Can I get you a seat that lays all the way down? <laughs> And some warm nuts before we take off. <laughs> and for me, they're like, I'll give you two bags of almonds. <laughs> I like it that much. But so I get off my flight from small. <laughs> no. <laughs> so when I get off my flight, just barely heading to Korea, I didn't get upgraded, but I did have uh, Delta Comfort, which just gives yeah, you a yeah, couple yeah, yeah. inches on each side. Which is really, really oh, totally, nice. Totally. And uh, and when I get off my flight, or as I'm getting off, the announcer says, Catherine Martin, please make sure that you talk to the agent at the end of the jet bridge. There's somebody waiting for you. I'm like, did I just hear that right? And all of a sudden I was like, am I going to miss my flight to Korea? Because once I'm in travel mode, I kind of relax. <laughs> I know I got a couple hour layover. I thought, oh my gosh, what if they change the time? And this guy, Craig, comes up. He's got shades on. He's like, I'd like to give you a ride. Oh, my alarm clock is going off. Is that your alarm? Yeah. Seven o'clock? Oh. Good morning, little Betsy. So you got a ride. Oh. So this is the wake up call. Here comes our song. Ah. Isn't that such a great way? Yeah. We talk about that in one of our episodes, that warm-up, that warm, -up, that, uh, that, warm <laughs> <laughs> that wake up Yeah. with the correct song, just put you in the correct mood. Oh, for the I rest love of the that. Day. It's like, here comes the sun. This is yeah. a brand new day. Yeah. So okay. anyway, there's a really big, I guess from one terminal to the next is a great distance. Yeah, and yeah. so they just came and picked me up and gave me... A ride right to the Sky Club. Yeah, super. And so Love I had that. a lot more time there. So when you start to fly, again, I fly, I book on one of these big websites as well. I use Travelocity or Orbitz. Mm -hmm. And when I say I do, I mean Brian does. <laughs> because as you guys heard in last week's episode, Brian pretty much does everything for me. <laughs> and uh, so... Then I always try and book with Delta because it just makes all of my travel experiences better. Now, if you don't travel that much, getting that credit card with the company that you would travel with really does make it so that you can get a higher status real fast. I love that. And I mean, we book our flights all the time and we, we make sure that we're always traveling with the same company because those benefits are just huge. But like my sister, when she travels, she travels a couple of times in a year she makes sure she's going to the airport four hours in advance, have a little breakfast there. It's a really holiday. And sometimes I miss that. Yeah. The, the holiday feeling of going to an airport and going through it and having your breakfast there and buying the newspaper yeah. to read it in the plane, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So you were saying when yeah. once you book. See, yeah, seat for seat. So for seat assignments, what I always do, for example, if I book for Cass and I and the plane has three seats and three seats in the middle aisle. So the three seats, A, B, C, I always book A and C. Now people say, why? Because why? Why? Tell me why. They're not sitting next to each other. No, because the middle seat is most of the time the seat that gets booked the latest, the last, because nobody wants to sit there. So those are only getting filled up when the plane is completely full. Yeah. So we end up most of the time with an empty seat in between us. If you book A and B, single people will 
very fast book the aisle seats. Yeah. So keep that middle seat free. If somebody is sitting in that middle seat, they are very happy to change for the aisle. And you end up then sitting next to each other anyway, yeah. which would have happened yeah. anyway. So there is a bigger chance that you have an empty seat if you book A and C. Now, don't start doing that all because otherwise we'll be screwed. <laughs> yeah. Don't you but dare take our chance. That, that is one of the tips that I do when I book my... Uh, my seat assignment for sure a lot of the companies you, maybe you don't know that but a lot of the companies give you a 24 hour guarantee that you can get your money back so sometimes you make a mistake and you don't want to do it but you already bought it you can call them and they actually refund your whole ticket which is something we had to do a lot of times already oh my gosh you book it and you're like no, no that's not right that's the wrong month <laughs> yeah what am i thinking so I just got this really cool thing. A couple things that make my travel better is one, a pillow. And I just got this new gadget. I'm going to show you. Oh, really? You're going to think this is the dorkiest thing in oh. the world. Okay. So, so I'm a it sucker. looks like a little umbrella case. Exactly. Okay. okay. Open it. So first off, having a good pillow is so mm. key. I slept you, really good, even though I wasn't laying flat, yeah. because I had a pillow that was just keeping my head yeah, yeah, yeah. from but doing see, that bobble. You see them walking in the air, air airport with those hoof oh, yeah. circle pillows, and you go, oh my God. But if you do long flights, they make a huge difference, I can tell you that. <gasps> oh yeah, I know what that is. Have you seen these? You just wrap it around your... No. So uh -huh. this is a like a foot hammock to keep your feet off the floor. So this is like, uh -huh. it, it looks Where do like you hang it? On your tray in front of you. So you put your tray down. You put this little uh -huh. strap. <laughs> it is the dorkiest thing in the world, you guys. And, and then you close it. And then they don't feel the weight of it. But you have like this little. But your knees are bended. And, but you just keep your legs like this, and then you don't have that pain against the back of your legs because your legs are lifted up just a little bit. So Brian was like, there's no way that would work for my legs because he's no, tall, no, but you're even me. taller than him. Yeah. And it but works? It works because I usually put my bag in front of me because I get extreme pain in my leg. It's just like a dead leg. So I always have to keep that leg off of those, off of the back, keep my, my leg goodness. lifted. Okay, we have to post that on Instagram so people know what this is about. But that that looks... And it's just, it looks like the dorkiest like back brace almost. Yeah. But okay. you put it over and you lay, you put your feet on it just to make that traveling more easy. So then I almost got to lay all the way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I could swing it forward. Yeah. So anytime on Instagram, you know how the Google gods are watching us and they start <laughs> sending you ads for things that yeah, yeah, they yeah, know... Yeah. You're gonna buy this little hammock is so handy and having a good neck pillow. Yeah. My favorite neck pillow was purchased by me. That's right. A little gift for me. <laughs> With that thick foam. I mean, if you have that neck pillow, it has to be a good quality one. And yours has like a memory oh, foam, and that was it's way I mean, it's better than my pillow at home. It's like the most <laughs> high quality neck pillow ever. And we were traveling with Brian and the kids to Europe recently, and I slept so well with that neck pillow. And every time I looked over, Brian's head was doing that like, Meow. like oh, he, he lay, yeah, that, oh. oh, and then he do a full circle around and just kinking your neck. And this neck pillow that I have is <laughs> memory foam, and it it connects in front of your chin, like around um, your under neck. your chin, yeah. so it really keeps it very tight. And then tight. you can do it; you can pull it tight. Because some of them oh. just have a snap, but you can't pull it tight to no. fit you and to fit the angles. Mm. And this neck pillow is just amazing yeah. because since I don't get the upgrades like Steve, he's going to tell you how he asks for his upgrades. I have to just have a little... Oh, no, I'm not sharing that secret. <laughs> yeah, you better. Well, for, first of all, okay, what is very important is that you're a freaking flyer and you have a car to go car because you've been flying with them for a long time, which gives you a benefit that you can actually check in your luggage or get your boarding pass at the first class or the business class counter. So that's already a difference. They're already treating you better. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They go like, okay, these people, freaking flyers. So <clears throat> I never, people always say, how do you always get upgraded? First of all, I have to say my favorite airline, Emirates, no doubt. 
I've flown a lot of airlines and there's many amazing airlines out there. Singapore Airlines, Thai, Qatar, Emirates. They're all amazing. But for me personally, Emirates is absolutely the best in the world. It got a couple of awards, best economy, class, best in flight service. I mean, their movies are fabulous. No, it's it's unlike anything I've ever Oh, yeah. We flew business class Emirates yeah. from Dubai to Saudi Arabia. And that was actually on a small plane. I felt like a princess. Oh, it was amazing. Oh, so. It's like really next level. It's like when, it's like you've been eating fast food places your whole life. You didn't realize that there was a nice sit down restaurant where <laughs> yeah, they yeah, yeah. have the, the lights dimmed oh, and the goodness. really fancy. And the stars oh, and the ceiling. And it's, crazy. it's just even the way they pull yeah. the shades down to give you shade yeah, is yeah. a whole it's and, next level. And when you fly the Airbus 380, which is a complete double decker, the upper deck is all business class. And in the back, there's a bar in the front. You have the suites where they can literally, when you're in the middle of the suite with two people, the wall goes down, they make it into a double bed. You have a shower. It is absolutely fabulous anyway when i check in and i'm flying economy class i would say hey how you doing good um i was just wondering if it's a full flight today mm, let me check and then they go and check and they say just in case i know it's wishful thinking but if you upgrade people i would be very happy to be on that list Even if I, if you want me to pay with miles or cash, I'm happy to do it, which I wouldn't do. Yeah. But you just don't say, um, um, oh, I would like to get an upgrade, something like that. You just say, you know what? I've got to really write that down and practice it because I tried yeah. it on the way here and I thought, what is it that Steve says? How does he word that in such a way that they can't help themselves but give them <laughs> <laughs> that upgrade? Always ask, is the flight full and are you upgrading people? Yeah. Don't I say, I want to get upgraded. Yeah. Are you upgrading people? Mm, for the moment, no. I said, well, just in case, if you do, I would love to be on that list. I can use some extra space, you know, and then, then I go step on my toes uh -huh. and they say, wow, that's a tall guy. Wow, you're so tall. <laughs> yeah, and many times they, they upgrade me. A uh, rule of life is you never get what you don't ask for. Uh, absolutely. So going and asking and And kindness goes a long way too. You go up and you say, "Hey, how are you doing today?" And you treat yeah. them with some respect because oh, yeah. usually people are just complaining to yeah. them. Yeah, no, no, no. You treat them with respect, but have a confidence. Be uh, not doubtful. Have a confidence. Always, I always make sure I fly and I dress nice. Yeah, not nice in the way that I'm having a costume on, but I travel a lot in just a plain black T-shirt. Yeah, uh, which. I mean, it's not like I'm traveling in my. You're not in your sportswear or something. Exactly, like that. you're so, not in your pajamas, no. which I see all the oh, time. Could, you know, in the U.S. The U.S. people are so sloppy, and I I used to travel probably more sloppy than I do. But there is something to dressing the part, and if you want to get an upgrade and you want to be oh. treated in such a way, you you need to But represent yourself in the world. Very strangely your friends and i don't i don't hope i don't step on anybody's toes but in the u.s you travel a lot but when i travel to utah i don't know you guys are people, always very yeah. nice dressed people in utah really take care of themselves yeah it's a very interesting thing like remember we were going to the gym and you're like i cannot believe how Every, in shape people are yeah, going in and out of this gym everybody and they're When you travel, your friends as well, your sister, your mom, everybody's always dressed very yeah. stylish. And it was something my, I think my mom, when the first few years of traveling, I would say, I wasn't that way. And I was just, I used to dress probably a little bit more sloppy. Mm. And I remember my mom, it just like triggered her memory. Every time my grandpa would come over for dinner, my mom would be like, because there was about a year that Brian... And I, when I was pregnant with Bridget, we lived in my mom's house. She kind of had this monster house. So we lived basically in like the West Wing. And uh, while Brian was finishing school and she would invite her parents over for dinner and she'd be like, is that what you're wearing? Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it is what I'm wearing. I just woke up from a Sunday nap. Your dad's oh, going to have to deal with these pajamas. Okay. But she really taught me to yeah. represent myself mm -hmm. in a way that 
you're proud of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not in a way that you feel it doesn't have to be over the top, but just yeah. that clean, fresh yeah, look. Yeah, it yeah, does yeah. it does help people to look at you in a different way. I was talking yeah. to my sister in law about this because she was laughing at how her kids, we were at arches. And her kids, I was cracking up because her daughter's outfit was like she had a blindfold on and she just dug through the drawers and just put together this smorgasbord of an outfit. Oh my God. And I was like, Michaela's outfit is just killing me today. She's just living her best life with all the mismatched socks. And she says, yeah, I just really don't, I don't know, maybe you look at it differently, but I really just let them kind of just pick whatever they want to wear. And yeah, I let my kids pick what they wear. But I also was talking to her about when I went to go help with my kids in school, the kids who were clean and fresh and put together seemed to carry themselves that way. Yeah. Like from yeah. the very beginning, they got ready for school. And then that started their yeah. whole day in that feeling of success. Yeah. Like, okay, now I'm ready. And of course, it's different for everybody. Yeah. It's, it, as long as it's your style. Because yeah. some people, I go like, wow, that style is not my style. But I can see that it suits them very well. And they wear it with a confidence. And sometimes people, I, I mean, the world is still, you know, when you go on, um, when you go for a new job interview, yeah. people say, make sure you dress up nice because you know that people will judge yeah. on clothes. If you take care of yourself, it means that you're going to take care of their company, which is something that I sometimes struggle with because I go like, oh, I don't really care what I wear. I know what I'm worth. And that's a fact. That's really true. What is also a fact is that other people would look at me in a different way. And I know you that always dress extremely well. Mm -hmm. No, you just have a sports style and I have a very sporty style as well. I'm not yeah, going to be yeah, wearing yeah, yeah. like heels. No, I'm no, yeah, more, yeah. I'm very comfy, chic, casual, chic, casual, chic. There you go. But you don't need to be wearing a, a suit and tie to get the part. No. You always look very nice. Hmm. Aww. That's what Emily was even telling me. We were talking about it when we went to San Francisco. Yep. That's oh. my second alarm to warn me just in case you're not up. <laughs> this is your second warning. Steve is banging on your door. That's Wake right. Up. Emily said, Steve has really taught you a lot about traveling. That's really? That's what she was saying to me when because we Because you were San traveling Francisco. together. Yeah. You were like, follow me. Oh, yeah. You better run, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but when we went to Dubai, speaking of fashion and how it changes around the world, I mean, oh, people yeah. in Korea have the coolest style. The so women yeah, have yeah. such cool style yeah, yeah. and they'll be wearing a really cool dress and then sneakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. just really, I love that yeah. kind of, that casual yeah. yet cool look. And in Dubai, even the women who are covered, you can see by their handbag and their heels, those women are not messing around. No, no. And even, I mean... Even Every, the way their nails are oh, done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And their makeup is beautiful, beautiful. So oh. it is different for everybody, of course. Anyway, that's a long talk about being dressed nicely to go get an upgrade. And <laughs> let me tell you, it does not always work as well. So give, you have a couple more tips about booking flights and stuff like that. You know, the best, the cheapest day to book is actually on a Tuesday. Yeah, Brian so, always books Tuesday. Yeah, so on a Tuesday, you get better prices because that's when a lot of tickets get out in the system and then they can see how many people are interested in certain flights another thing if you search for a flight and again for the same flight the next day and again for the same flight it can get expensive very fast so i don't know how it works so maybe it's because always, they're watching yeah, you yeah because the they google can, gods yeah, I, this yeah, is yeah, news yeah. to me because they can see that you're interested in that certain flight and then Hmm. Prices can go up very fast. How many times did Brian said it just went up so oh, fast? Oh yeah, yeah. Fifty dollars more, just in yeah. two hours. Yeah, the next yeah. morning. Yeah. So I have an app called Instagram. Have you ever heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but I follow somebody who posts flights from Salt Lake, cheap flights from Salt Lake, mm -hmm. and they will post just deals that they find from Salt Lake to any destination. That's how we found those ones from Barcelona. We found round trip tickets to Barcelona for when we went in June for $400 each. Crazy. That's how we went to Hawaii. We found those cheap flights Crazy. as well. So if you find somebody who that's their business and they do yeah. cheap flights from your area, yeah. if you're looking for a vacation, you're not so picky on the destination. That might give you some more options. Yeah. 
And something also with working with the same airline is gathering those miles. Oh, totally. And that's how we, that's how my family, we travel. We usually use those miles yeah. for if Brian's going to come or if we do one trip a year with the kids, yeah. then we use miles that way. Yeah. So also flying is really a very safe way to travel. Don't let the fear of something that is unknown yeah. keep you from seeing the world. People look at me and they say, oh, be so careful. And it's like, like uh, I feel just as safe here in Seoul, Korea as I do anywhere in the oh, world. Totally. So don't let the fear of the unknown keep you from seeing the beauty of the world yeah. and really expanding your view on people and yeah how your heart feels toward people and don't be scared to travel if you say i want to do a city trip go and do it go online find that trip it takes 10 seconds to go on a search engine find that city that you always wanted to visit and go and do it so what's a city that you you can pick one place of a cool fun vacation that you're looking that you want to do a city a city trip yeah Hmm. I really catered that question to what I want to say. Oh, so let's start, <laughs> let's start with you. There is a city I really want to go to. And, it and is? for the only purpose of eating, I want to go on a food trip to Atlanta, Georgia. Really? Yeah. I was watching on a flight of the Food Network did from all the hosts of the shows. They did like a collaboration of the best places to eat mm. in the U.S., and they did this whole episode on Atlanta, Georgia, and all these secret places and what to order off the yeah, menu. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. And I did screenshots like mad, and I want to put together a plan. Okay, we go. Yeah, and just eat our we'll book way. It. We're telling that... people to book it. We're booking it now. Absolutely, because we were saying even last night, the best thing that we like to do on a trip love it. is Food. eat. Food, yeah. Go we and love discover. to discover different things yeah, to eat. Yeah, yeah, If I would have to pick a city... Hmm. I've been to many, many, many cities and I'm just thinking about a city that I said I've never been there, would love to visit it. Huh. Well, we both talked about Alaska. Yeah, but it's not really a city, but... Yeah, but doing it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a city. No, but I would love to go back to Tokyo. Oh, yeah. Tokyo, Tokyo, New York, Sydney. I love those cities. Yeah. But Tokyo for me is fabulous. So if I could be myself, I would yeah. be Tokyo. But Seoul, I mean, we're in Seoul now. It's, it's very pretty similar. Close. But pretty close. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed our tricks and tips and get ready because we have a part two coming up where we talk a little bit more about travel and how to book hotels and stuff like that. And so, packing tips. Packing and if tips. you're thinking of a place to go, how about you come to Canada on July 21st. Oh my God, I can't not wait. It's going to be absolutely fabulous. You can find a lot of information. Go to the website, thefunroad.com or castandsteve.com. Click on Life Events Canada, 21st of July. And I said this all in one breath. Very, very impressive. And if you're <laughs> unsure about what the live events are all about, it is a motivational day packed with inspiring strategies and tips and tricks to yeah. really start creating the life that you love that is catered to you and to yeah. really take that happiness and bring it sky high. And if you cannot do the training, we have a webinar online that we're actually going to launch again after uh, July. Yep. We're going to start, I don't know if we're starting August or September, but keep an eye open for that because you can do the training right from your couch at home. Yeah. It's a step-by-step -step plan. It's an eight week Ooh, course. Baby. I like it like that. <laughs> <laughs> you said step, step by step. step. So I was supposed to go to a New Kids on the Block concert last night. What? Yeah. Last I'm not night, joking you. I'm not joking. You were in Korea. Exactly. So oh, my friend okay. That's why. gave me a birthday present to go to. Wait, do they still tour? They did a tour also with Reunited. Debbie Gibson. Reunited and it feels so good. Okay. That was it. But I'm here in Korea instead. Yeah, much, much, much <laughs> better. New kids on the block or Steve Wood in Korea. I know what to choose. Oh, New Steve Wood every time. New kids on the block for sure. Okay, <laughs> tune in. Let us know what you think about our podcast. Give us a five-star rating. And don't forget, if you do something that reminds you of the podcast, hashtag Instagram, hashtag MyFunRoad. 
That's right. And we'll see you in July 21st in Canada. Thanks, guys. Bye. Goodbye now. Bye now. Goodbye.